What's going on everybody? It's the Home Theater Hobbies here. And this week we have our full review of the Monoprice Monolith Amplifier. This is the seven channel version, but a lot of what I'm gonna say will apply to the entire line. As many of you know, Monoprice has been on a tear for the past several years, releasing high quality products at reasonable prices. It started out with cables and things like that, and they have moved into the higher end game with their Monolith lineup of products. Now those products are also still reasonably priced, but they're very, very focused. They have speakers, headphones, subwoofers, amplifier, furniture, cable, and many other things like that. And I want to talk about the amplifiers here today. Now I have the seven channel version here, but this review does apply to basically all of the amplifiers in the lineup. And I'm gonna talk about that today. But before we get too far into this, if you enjoyed this type of content and in-depth reviews just like this one, why don't you click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be alerted anytime we upload new content. The Monolith 7 features a Class AB design with two toroidal transformers that output 200 watts of power into 8 ohms across the entire frequency range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz and 300 watts of power into 4 ohms across the frequency range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. It has a total harmonic distortion of less than 0.03% and the impedance is rated from 4 ohms all the way to 16 ohms. The A-weighted signal to noise ratio is 110 dB. The amplifier stands 7 inches tall, 17 inches wide, 16 and a half inches deep, and it weighs 93.2 pounds. The seven channel version costs $1,600. Now let's talk about the other models in the Monolith lineup. Monoprice has all of our AV needs covered. They feature a two, three, five, seven, nine, and 11 channel models. Now the two, three, five, and seven have basically the same specs as I have here. They may be a little bit smaller, but otherwise they're the same. 200 watts per channel, all channels driven with a total harmonic distortion of 0.03%. Now the nine and 11 channel versions are a little bit different. They feature three channels with 200 watts per channel and the remaining channels with 100 watts per channel. Now they still have the same total harmonic distortion of 0.03%, but they are a little bit different. Now in my opinion, the seven channel is probably the sweet spot because you get 200 watts per channel, but your needs may vary and you can kind of pick whichever model you want. So some of you may be asking, what does this box actually do? Basically, it takes a signal, amplifies it, and sends it to your speakers so you can hear sound. That's all it really does. Now, as I said, it takes a signal. It doesn't process a signal. There's no processing in this box. You will need a signal processor, like a processor, AV receiver, or even an integrated amplifier. Now, if you go with the AV receiver route, make sure you have pre-out connections on your AV receiver so you can connect to a box like this. So that brings us to our next question. If I have an AV receiver or integrated amplifier, do I need an external amplifier like this one? The short answer is no, you don't need an external amplifier, but it is nice to have. AV receiver manufacturers, integrated amplifier manufacturers publish specifications for their amplifiers and they may say something like 90 watts per channel, 150 watts per channel, and let's say you've got a five channel system. Well, when you look at those specs, what you'll notice is a lot of times they'll say 150 watts per channel, two channels driven at let's say eight ohms. And what that means is if you connect two speakers to it, eight ohm speakers, you'll get 150 watts of power. But as you add more speakers to that, your power levels start to drop. Well, with a dedicated external amplifier like this one, you get 200 watts per channel, all channels driven. So if you hook up seven speakers to this, you will still get 200 watts of power. And the reason why that is important is because when you're listening to music, watching movies, and you have a really soft sound, and then a second later you have a really loud sound, you have a large dynamic range. And so your power sent to the speaker, your amplifier needs to be able to cover that dynamic range. And if it can't cover it, what'll happen is your speaker will clip a little bit. It'll clip out wherever it doesn't have the power. 
And so an external amplifier gives you that dedicated power for all your channels. And that's the basics of why you'd want to add an external amplifier to your AV receiver. The front of the monolith amp is pretty simple. It's just a black face. No screens or anything like that to give you any indications. It does have a chamfer, a pretty big chamfer, right around the top and the edges to give you a little bit more design aesthetic. And honestly, I think it looks a bit better in person than in pictures. At the top, you have the monolith logo there. Just below that, you have the description of which amplifier you have. In my case, it's a seven channel, so it has a seven X there. And just below that, you have the front power button that you just push on and the amplifier comes on. The light turns full blue when everything is fully powered on. Now this light cannot be turned off. It will always be on. I didn't find it distracting while I was actually watching movies or television, but if you do find it distracting, you can always put a piece of black electrical tape over it. The rear channel of the monolith amplifiers is laid out very logically. Each channel is aligned vertically across the back panel. At the top, you have an XLR connection followed by your RCA cable. And just under that, you have an XLR or RCA switch. So you can switch between which one you're using. And just below that, you have your speaker connections uh, for positive and negative. Now, in between that, you have a label that tells you which speaker you should connect to this connection. Center channels in the center, left hand connections are on the left hand side and right hand connections are on the right hand side. On the far right of the rear panel, you have the trigger connection at the top, along with a ground if it's needed, the main power switch, and the power connection down here at the bottom. Monoprice makes it very easy to connect to your preprocessor, AV receiver, or your speakers. Starting with your speakers, Monoprice recommends that you use 14 American wire gauge or thicker, so 14, 12, or 10 American wire gauge. You plug red with red and black with black, just like that. And on the other end, you plug red with red and black with black. To connect to your AV receiver or preprocessor, you can use an XLR connection like this one, plug in there, or an RCA connection like this one, and you connect just like that. Once you connect those, make sure you flip the switch to the correct connection type, and you are good to go. Now I'm going to play some audio samples for you so you can hear how this amplifier compares to my AV receiver, the Denon AVR-X 4400H. To determine how the monolith amplifier sounds, I use my Denon AVR-X4400H as my signal processor and basis for comparison. The AVR-X outputs 125 watts per channel with a harmonic distortion of 0.05%, two channels driven, while the monolith amplifier is 200 watts per channel with a distortion of 0.03%, and that's across all the channels. Now to do my testing, I only listen to two channel things, music and I also watch movies in two channel. And what I found was I got more clarity and more depth of image when the external amplifier was hooked up to the speakers versus just my AVR. An example of this would be when I was listening to music, I was listening to a live concert and the artist finished singing and the audience started clapping. Well, with the Denon AVR-X, I could hear the clapping, it was fine. But once I connected the external amplifier, what I heard was that one audience member was actually closer to a microphone than the rest. And so their clapping was louder, it was more clear, and honestly, I got more depth of image between that person being close to the mic and the rest of the audience. Now that carries on as you listen to things or as you watch movies and do things in multi-channel because you have all of that power going to your speakers and so you get more clarity and again more depth of image from all of your speakers as compared to a standard AVR. So overall, I highly recommend the monolith lineup of amplifiers from Monoprice. I mean, they give you plenty of power across all channels, which is different from a lot of your AV receivers. 
when you look at AV receiver specs, they say all channels until you look deep in the specs, then they'll show you their numbers for two channels driven and a total harmonic distortion. And sometimes that's for a single frequency, like a thousand hertz or something like that. Whereas this is power across the entire frequency range for each individual channel. And that makes a pretty big difference. The other thing I like is the fact that they give you so many different models to choose from, from two channel to five, all the way to 11 channels. Now these are big and heavy, so you will need space for them, but you can basically buy the one that you want and buy two if you really need them, if you need more than let's say 11 channels and really, really dial in your system at very reasonable prices. So if you wanna purchase this or anything else from Monolith, use those links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We'll talk to you next time.